Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna start chapter three and we're gonna be looking at basic types and how you declare variables for those basic types. Now all the languages that we um, are looking at have some more complex data types and um, for some of them, it's kind of consistent how you might declare variables to hold those other more complex values, but for some, it kind of changes a little bit. So I decided that what I'll do instead is just focus on basic types that are mostly integral, sort of Boolean that um, as the sort of type. Um, for a lot of languages, um, the newer languages, string is gonna be considered a basic type. And even in C, you had this idea of a string. But I'm gonna put string in its own chapter because as you're gonna see, as we go across the languages, um, they support string differently. So anyway, let's look at C. So in C, when we look at the integral types, um, we have um, the idea of a character or an unsigned character. Now you could just say I have a character or I have an unsigned character. And what, or a signed character, sorry. And what it means is I have a one byte value or a value that could fit into one byte. And here one byte is eight bits. So we can, when we talk about bytes, we're talking about eight bits. And eight bits can represent a number if it's signed meaning that I can say whether it's positive or negative, from minus 128 to 127 positive, right? If it's unsigned, it still takes up one byte, but now I can say that oh, the value I can represent is zero to 255. Again, that's because the idea here is that I don't have a sign, so I'm never gonna use negative. So this is great for when I know that oh, I want some really small numeric values, but I'm not gonna be dealing with negatives. Um, C also have this idea of a short. And short just means two bytes. And again, if it's a signed short, we're talking about a value that's minus at negative 32,000 to positive 32,000 thereabout. If I want to represent larger values, but I know I'm not, I don't need the negative, so I do an unsigned one. And I still use two bytes, but now I can represent from zero to 64,000 essentially. Integer, and this is where it gets confusing for C. An integer could be either two bytes or four bytes. And the reason for that is depending on the platform that you're on, the language never specified. It just, in just always default to what the natural size of that architecture is. So years ago, I used to program um, embedded system on a Motorola DSP, Digital Signal Processor. And there, everything um, was a word addressable. And so you couldn't even address a byte even if you wanted to. Um, so when you increment address location from one to two, you actually, every address, when you say address one, the reference, two bytes. Address two, the reference, two bytes. So you've skipped over um, a byte. So every time you increment the address, you're going two bytes at a time. And that's because it was not byte addressable, it was just only word addressable. And the other thing there was that the int would always default to the natural size of that architecture, which was just two bytes. Um, and so if you said int or you said short, you get the exact same thing. Um, on a 32-bit platform, uh, int is gonna get you four bytes. Um, but I'm probably gonna guess that in a 64-bit machine, an int might actually get you, six, um, you know, eight bytes, but we'll see, maybe we'll try it one day. The next thing is, of course, you can always do unsigned int, and of course, that allow you to do uh, representation from zero to whatever the max is, which is pretty much, you know, when you're doing sign, it's gonna be uh, always half of your address, um, your available values, okay, as you can see the pattern there. Long um, is gonna be four bytes, um, then there's unsigned long. Now, again, this is where C gets really weird because on some platform used to be in compilers used to allow you to say things like long, long. And so there used to be eight bytes. So I didn't put that on air because um, I started to look at um, what was in the C book and that wasn't there. All right, so that's for the integral values. There are also floating point values. So they're not integers, all numbers. These are your decimal type numbers, okay? And so these are gonna be float, double, and long double. Now, um, if you have a lot of money, you're gonna be wanting to use something like double and long double. 
that's gonna allow you to represent your billions of dollars okay generally um, if you want to represent currency people tend to say just use double um, C gives you all this control As you can see in some other languages they just go this is what you get and you have no control over it so um, C certainly is the language where you want to do certain type of manip manipulation you can sort of say what you want and you are allowed that control because you don't use any more than you need so if you have a language like C and you know that a value is never going to go over 64,000 you know that you can use a short for that and you don't need to use a double or a long and use more bytes than you need so you just make your program bigger and so in other languages where you don't have that control, you trade that control of not being able to limit how much bytes you use. So you're sort of wasteful on bytes, but you get easier program because you don't have to think a lot about, well, how much do I really need? And what if I go over when I'm running my program or something like that? Um, so there's always a trade-off. That's why a language like C is used for embedded programming because their memory is tight and when it's memory tight, you want things to be fast and you don't want it to be bloated. And so if your stuff is too big, it's going to take longer to run. And so you really want this type of control of how much bytes are you using. You really want tight control on your memory. And so we'll see that a lot of things in C is all around this idea of you having a lot of control. You might shoot yourself in the foot with it, but we're going to give you the gun. You better know how to use it. You notice I didn't mention anything like a boolean because C does not have the idea of a boolean value, which is true or false. It's you use a character for that. Later on, there's something in C that we're gonna look at called a bit field, but that is much later on, um, and that's slightly beyond the idea of just a boolean. Um, that's a little bit more involved. So basic syntax for declaring a variable in C is you specify the type. And then you specify an identifier. Identifier is the name of the variable, right? And so example, there would be like character age. And you don't have to initialize it. That's just a declaration. You're saying, I declare that I have a, or I want a variable called age of type character. And it's, of course, it's signed there. Um, another way you can go about doing things is say, okay, at the time when I declare my variable, I'm gonna give it a value. And so that's the second example where you, yes, you have an expression and you know I have a literal value there but your expression could be some computation that gets evaluated and the end result gets assigned and so C has even more complex variable declaration but I didn't want to go into that it can get really weird and it's so crazy there's actually a website for C variable declaration where you can put a declaration in and ask it like what does this really mean because C declaration can get pretty hairy and that's one of the things that Go actually cleaned up pitfall um, you might not think of this as a pitfall, but in that first declaration there, when we do character age and we don't assign it a value, in C by default, that can have any value. So if you declare a variable and it's just printed out, you never know what value is going to be. It's not going to be the default. It doesn't have a default value like in Go. Every variable has a default value. Um, so a Boolean value default value is going to be false, and a string default value is going to be an empty string and a map default value is nil and that sort of thing. Um, C doesn't have that, neither does C++. Maybe in later version of C++, I don't know, I haven't been keeping up, but I doubt whether they would do that. And if you think about it, what does it mean for a user to declare a variable and then the language guarantees that how it's properly initialized? That environment has to do some work to say, when you create a variable, here's what it's gonna look like. But when that executable is loaded, somebody gotta go clear out that memory. And for C, they're just like, you don't set it, we're not setting it. And so that allows you to get to running and working as quickly as possible. But here's the, here's the pitfall, is that if you forget and you start adding or using it in a way without initializing it, um, you can get into trouble, uh, make an assumption about what value is in there. And so C doesn't warn you before using a variable that's not initialized. These things have caused so much problem that you see in other languages that you're gonna see like in Java, they don't force you to initialize a variable, but they warn you that, oh, hey, this variable might not have been initialized. And um, same thing with Go. Um, of course, the new compilers in C probably have um, extensions and stuff that you can specify to say, I wanna enable warning for all non-initialized variables and blah, blah, blah. But by default, the language specification doesn't require any of that stuff and 
I'm pretty sure early in the days didn't say that. Like C99, which came out to C++, probably started adding in some of those sort of warning and so on like that. All right, so time to jump into our code and take a look and see what um, how we can play with some of these things. Okay, so we're gonna start off in this new directory that we have here for um, playing wrong with uh, C, and so we're gonna create a directory um, to our C example, and then within that, um, we're gonna start writing a simple application. Now, of course, I'm gonna speed up writing some of the code because it's getting boring to show um, writing code, but you know, I'm gonna include stdoidh because we're gonna use the printf function to print out stuff. There's also another function that I'm gonna start off with called um, put character, put character, and or put char, and so I'm gonna use that too. So that comes from the standard out um, library, and this is the header file that defines some of those functions. Um, later on, I don't know exactly when, maybe towards the end or something in one of these videos, I'm gonna start to go through and compare the language sizes, and you're gonna see why I think C is such a great language. Besides some of the crazy, besides all the crazy stuff, um, it's pretty small language. So anyway. I was able to declare some variable here and notice it's just variable declaration. I'm just saying I have C, I have I, I have L, all these other things of different types. I, I run my program right now and I have no error or warning because it's okay to declare variables and not use them. This is unlike Go. C, you can declare whatever you want and it's up to you if you want to use it or not. They don't care, right? Remember, C lets you do whatever you want. But I'm going to print out um, the character and unsigned character. And notice, it looks like I don't, I'm not getting anything here um, for character, but um, for unsigned character, I'm probably getting something. I wanna know what the value is, the number they're associated with. Remember, these are all numer numeric types here. And all I'm doing is when I say print the characters, I'm telling C, well, this number, I want you to interpret it as a character and print it out for me, okay? And so when I put stuff in single quotes as a character, and that's just like a number. So that function takes a number. And the thing that looks like a single quote there in single quote, like a string, is just a character. And I'm just saying, give me the equivalent number for that thing, for that character. Well, okay, I'm not making much headway with printing out stuff with um, using the put char function. So I'm gonna go and actually um, use our good old tried and through um, printf function. And I'm going to say print out this character. And I'm going to print out both what the value of C is and also what um, the value of um, UC is in a minute. And so if I use this and I put a new line, then I run it, I'll see it all. It's nothing. I don't know what's going on. Well, that's because it's, it's zero. And when you try to print the corresponding character for zero, it's nothing, right? Um, that's not a that's considered a non-printable character. All right. So if I go back now and, like I say, put um, print out UC as a character, and then um, run it to see what that looks like, I see it. Oh, I'm getting nothing for C for the C the character, but I'm getting this weird thing for the unsigned character. And that's just because that's the value it's being assigned. I shouldn't read too much into it because it could be anything. You could write this exact same program and not get the same result. Now, um, there's format specifiers. So you see me use percent %c. So how do I know what to use for the different types? Well, those are here and you can go look it up um, online. I'm gonna go to Wikipedia, um, but you can pretty much go anywhere. And I'm going to scroll along to the section here about the format specifiers and it's gonna tell you the set of characters you can use for different types. And so there they are. If we look them over, we can see which one we're gonna use. And so we're gonna use the ones for printing out an integer. Um, and we're not gonna care too much about some signed int or anything, but yeah, we can do that too. Um, we're gonna print out some using an F, E, N, G to show you it out. They are pretty much print out the same way. And then we're gonna um, print out using hexadecimal values. Um, so let's speed through um, doing some print statements and printing these out. Um, again, I'm gonna just 
basically take each one of our variables and again they're not initialized previously so they're just declared and then I'm going to start um, printer mode so let me speed forward through that okay so once I've done that and um, have it like this this is all of them now I could run the program and see the results and so um, this is what we have and if I center it back on the screen it looks like if I'm still getting nothing and now I'm getting four for you see um, again like I said every time you run this you can get a different value um, so what does that mean um, it doesn't mean anything really <laughs> um, but it might probably be easier if I put a line number with this on each one of these and so now I could see which line correspond to what and so um, let's do that and this is the end result after I arrange add line numbers and rerun the code. And you can see that for now, my C corrector value is 13 before it was zero. But then when I print it out as a corrector, I get the new line corrector because that's what 13 is, the new line corrector. But when I print it out as an integer, percent %i on line one there, you can see it shows me that out that value is actually number 13, but when printed as a corrector, I get a new line, right? And if you go through and you can look at all these and you can see, and then you can see on line four, for example, when I print it out as an hexadecimal, I get the value D, which corresponds to, to 13 numeric value, but an hexadecimal is D. But I could go put like, um, zero x in front of it to mean hexadecimal um, and then you know sort of look a little bit better um, in terms of it look like a real hexadecimal number okay so that's all still fooling around with um, how things are printed out um, so let's go initialize our um, variables now instead of instead of just declaring them and letting the computer figure out what we should, values we should have um, we're going to initialize them and then once I initialize them, this this is what I have. Notice on purpose on line 14, I have an unsigned character, but I'm gonna set it to be 256. Now that's more than the value that's supposed to hold in an unsigned character. Remember, unsigned character is from zero to 255, but I'm going to set a little slightly bigger value than um, what should be held in there. And it's just to show you something with C. Um, C Again, the whole compiler would suddenly just cast things or either truncate it. Um, but, you know, the new compiler, they might warn you and so on. But still, it's not an error and your program still run. So if we run our program there, we can see it out of like three warnings or something off screen. If I change the value, um, you can see it's basically wrapping it, a wrap around. Okay, and it's look like the value minus, whatever I tried to set, minus 256 was 256. That's um, two raised to the eight. And so if I have time with an eight bit value, then it's two raised to the eight, that's 256. And so it's just wrapping around that value there and truncating it. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna just copy these and put these into function. Now we haven't talked about how to create functions really in C, but um, I'm gonna sort of ignore that and just put all my values into a function here. So I'm gonna put my variable, sorry, into functions. I'm gonna put them in two functions. I'll put them in one function for printing out when we have variable declaration and one for printing out when we have variable initialization. And then I'm gonna rerun, try to run it. And as you can see, when I try to run it, um, I have this error here. And it's saying that oh, we have conflicting type for a function var declaration, right? And then the other error is the same thing for var in it. Um, so why is this? Well, this has to do with the fact that um, C basically, um, if you don't, the type of my function here, which says it returns void or it doesn't return anything, but you don't specify a function dec declaration, it assumes that it'll return int. So it's saying that those two things don't match up. But if I go before my main now and I specify that oh, these are actually, and declare my function, notice I don't implement them. I declare them or I don't define them. I just declare them and say, I have these function that return void. It works perfectly fine. I, could, I still have warnings about the types and the specifiers I'm using, but it's not an error, it's just warning. But my program still runs. And before when it didn't run, it's because 
it had I had two different types of function, one that returns an int and one that didn't. Whereas here I just specify um, thing. I could have made my function run by just specifying it was an int and then use a return value. It will work just fine. Um, and that's why we use really <laughs> uh, header files in C is just to pull in those declarations and it, it does not have the definition. And you will see when we go for a little bit further, we will write our own that header file and all we're gonna put in this is like declarations. Um, the definition or implementation go into the that C, into the that C file, your source file. The header file at that age just declares what is it that you wanna use. And we're gonna also take a look um, at the header files that come with the language C and you know, it's really small language. Uh, you're gonna be convinced, I think, when you see how many header files there are, they're not that many. And just how small each header file is. It really is a very small language that you could walk around with in your head. It's a crazy language in that it allows you to do sort of like what you want, anything you want. C is almost like having a older siblings that sibling that let you get away with anything or really bad parents that just don't correct you. That is C. Um, does it is it nice that you can do that? Probably when you want to do something really bad. Is it a good thing that you should be able to get away with anything? Not in every situation. And so very few limited situations where you really want to be able to get away and do whatever you want. But it's good that if a language has some guardrails, so just stop you from being your most evil self. And C does not have too many guardrails or any really. It's almost like high level assembly language. Assembly language, you, could, you have control of the processor, you could do pretty much anything you want. And as we can see, because C is without any guardrails, the languages that come afterward try to put in some guardrails and they go like, eh, let's limit you a little bit. C++ tried to walk that line um, by saying, yeah, we put in some guardrails, but not too many. Like we're gonna have a guardrail here on a sign that says warning. You know, if you lean against this, you're gonna fall over the edge, but we're not gonna put anyone there to stop you from leaning against the railings. Um, and if you fall over the edge, well, maybe you want it to go over the edge, right? <laughs> I know that sounds very bad, but that's, that's how it is. All right, I'm gonna stop talking there because this video is very long. Um, follow me on Twitter, at Straversity1. Twitter, Instagram is at Straversity. And as usual, thanks for your time appreciated. Thumbs up the video, subscribe, please spread the word. I'd love to have a ton more people come watch the video, comment, um, help out, whatever, um, provide feedback, whatever it is. And of course, follow and so on. Um, take care and see you in the next video.